in a Muslim place of worship, in a masjid, in a public library, in different bookshop, our Holy Quran, one and the same. Why? It's got 104, like, you know, Christians have number of books in the Bible, which is a book itself. Okay? 66 books, 73 books, 86 books, 81 books, 78 books, 75 books, uh, 75 books in the Coptic Christian Bible. You know, Coptic Christians who, who live in Egypt, also in Africa. So the Coptic Christians in Africa, their Bible has 75 books. All right. So, but our Holy Quran, 114 surahs, chapters. We, we have chapters in the Quran. Okay. And uh, Holy Quran is our book. So our Holy Quran everywhere, anywhere, one and the same. The first surah chapter is Surah Al-Fatiha, the opening. And the last surah chapter is surah chapter number 114, which is surah An-Nas, the, the mankind, all right? And what's good about our, you know, for us Muslims, we have to believe in our Holy Quran from the beginning to the end. If we say we are Muslim, we don't believe even half a verse, even one word, even one letter of the Holy Quran, then we, we might say we are Muslim, we cannot be Muslim. Okay? That's our belief. For example, what's in our Holy Quran? You know, people say, oh, Islam is, you know, terrorism. They are people who kill, kill, kill. No, that's not Islam. Because in uh, our Holy Quran, uh, it is same everywhere, same message everywhere. In our Holy Quran about killing, in Surah al maida the table spread, Surah chapter number 5, Ayah verse number 32, Allah says, if anyone, if anyone kills a person, one person, unjustly, it is as though he has killed the whole of humanity. That's okay. And if anyone, uh, second part of that verse, Allah says, if anyone saves the life of a person, it is as though he has saved the life of the whole of humanity. So in Islam, life is very important, you know. Muslims can't just go out there and start killing people, no. And in Islam, also, you know, our Prophet Muhammad, as Muslims, we believe in all the Prophets. As Muslims, we believe in all the Prophets in the previous books, okay? In the book of Zams, okay? In the book of, in the Torah, Revealed, uh, Book of Psalms revealed to the Prophet David, Dawud Ali Islam, peace be upon him, and the Torah which was revealed to the Prophet uh, Musa Ali Islam, Moses, peace be upon him, and the Injil, uh, which the Christians say the Bible, uh, which was revealed to the Prophet Isa Ali Islam, Jesus, peace be upon him, and the Holy Quran, which is the fourth and final book of Revelation, which is our Holy Quran. All right, and uh, so we believe in all the prophets okay we cannot disrespect them if those prophets are mentioned in the bible like david solomon elijah elisha we have to respect them and if we talk against them not muslim you understand so life is very important there's another uh, for example another example good example i'll tell you for children you know parents are very precious Parents are very special, all right? And as children, we have to look up to them with respect. I'll give you a verse in our Holy Quran. In Surah Al-Isra, also known as Bani Israel, which is Surah chapter number 17, Ayah verse number 23, part of that, Allah says, Wabil walidayne ihsana, in English, and do good to your parents. So in other words, parents look after the children, okay, when they are born, whilst they are growing up. They pay for their food, they, for their clothing, for their, uh, you know, upbringing. And, uh, you know, many times, like in um, uh, some countries, you will know that when children grow up, they say, oh, we have our own life. They go, maybe the parents are in uh, England, the, maybe uh, the children might go to Canada, Australia, you know, USA. That's all. Oh, we have our own life. 
Well, you see the old parents, when they grow old, they, are, they go into these old people's homes. Why? Because they got nobody to look after them. Because the children they brought up, when they grew up, they said they got their own life. So they went about their own life somewhere else, you know. Maybe the parents are living in London, the children have moved to Manchester or Bradford, other cities, towns of this country. And or maybe if they visit their parents, maybe after about five years, once a year, maybe after 20 years, some of them never return. So that's why uh, in our Holy Quran, when Allah says, Wabil wale daini ihsana, and do good to your parents. In other words, when we grow up, the children, we have to look after our parents because we have to repay their kindness. So they were kind. So we have to look after them. We have to be kind to them. And another verse in our Holy Quran, uh, for example, I'm trying to uh, paint a picture, tell you what Allah says in our Quran. What are the teachings of our holy book, the Quran? They are good teachings. For example, in Surah Al-Baqarah, the cow, which is Surah chapter number two, ayah verse number 195. Allah says, because our holy Quran was revealed in Arabic, now we are translations in nearly so many different languages of the world, you know, but it was revealed in Arabic because Allah, the name of God Almighty is Arabic. The Holy Quran was revealed in Arabic. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, uh, the name Muhammad is Arabic. It means highly praised. And the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he was an Arab. Okay. But now the Prophet was born in Mecca, which is in Saudi Arabia. And he migrated to Medina, uh, Yathrib, which became known as Medina, when the Prophet migrated over there because he was persecuted in the place of his birth in Mecca. So he had to migrate, you know. And, uh, and now look, in the year uh, uh, 2023, in the Christian era, in the Christian calendar, and in the year 1444 in our Islamic calendar, there are Muslims in all the continents, Muslims in every country. And there are out of just over 200 countries, about 56, 57 countries with majority Muslims, they are Muslim country. Uh, for example, in Africa, you have the biggest, most populated country, uh, strong country, uh, Nigeria. It's now majority Muslim. Uh, the other countries, Nigeria, for example, you might have heard of them, Senegal, uh, Guinea, uh, Chad, Niger, Ivory Coast, it used to be known and now they know it as Cote d'Ivoire, sort of a French name now, you know, and so many other uh, countries, you know. Uh, in Asia, where the biggest, most populated country, Muslim countries are, for example, Indonesia, which is a country of over 18,000 different islands make one country, Indonesia, with a population of more than 272 million. That's the most populated uh, uh, Muslim country. Then I'm from Pakistan, Pakistan, with a population of 200, around 230 million, majority Muslim. Uh, Turkey, which is now known as Turkey, which is uh, part, around 10,000 square miles in Europe, Istanbul used to be known as Constantinople and around 296,000 square miles in Asia, a big strong NATO country is a Muslim country, you know. So, and also if you check up, Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world, all right. Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world and Christianity, I'm not saying it because I'm a Muslim, because in Islam, to Tell a lie is also a sin, all right? So uh, you live in this country, you probably would have seen. In this country, you know, churches are closing down. Why? Because less people are going to churches. They have gone away from believing in God. They have gone away from believing in Jesus, you know, the God-man, man-God, whatever. They have gone away from Christianity. 
And uh, I have prayed in Muslim places of worship, masjids. We used to be churches. And even the Jewish synagogues are closing down. I have prayed in uh, Muslim places of worship in a masjid, which used to be Jewish synagogues. You know, So Christian churches are closing down. For example, you know, in this country, uh, probably you will know, in this uh, United Kingdom, they have a census every 10 years. So the last census in this country was uh, the one before the last was in the year 2011. Okay, in 2011, they found out the number of Christians in this country, uh, England and Wales, they were about 60 percent, six zero, about 60 percent Christians in England and Wales. Ten years later, in the uh, census of the year 2021, they found out the Christians from being 60 percent in England and Wales, in 2021, they had gone down to being 46 percent. So nearly 14 percent down from 10 years previously. And not because I'm a Muslim, I'm telling you the truth. In the next census, after 10 years, in the year 2031, I'm sure Christianity is going to drop from being 46 percent in this country to maybe about, let's say, 32 percent. 33 percent. I'm not jumping to. Okay. Very nice of you. You are youngsters and you gave your time to me. Uh, I'm like an old uncle, but thank you very much. It's uh, it's very nice to see. You know, our Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. He said, "This is hadith saying of the Prophet. The Prophet said, the best of you is the best in manners." Now, I have grown up in this country, all right? You've probably been born in this country, grown up in this country, I'm guessing, okay? But, uh, you know, you have seen, I have seen, there are many youngsters who are not very well mannered. But I must say, I must uh, admit that you were very well mannered, you listened to me, gave me your precious time, and I thank you very much. And if you ever find time, because in Islam there is no force, you know, people say Islam spread by the sword. No, never. It's not like that. Uh, because in our Holy Quran, Allah, uh, uh, last ayah, Allah says in Surah Al-Baqarah, the Khal, Surah chapter number 2, ayah verse number 256, Allah says, La ikraha fid deen. There is no compulsion in religion. There is no force in religion. What is truth will stand out clear from what is falsehood. Okay, so people will listen, people might read the Holy Quran, they will realize Muhammad Ali, Cassius Clay, when he became the heavyweight champion of the world in the boxing ring, the referee once was going to announce when, uh, when Cassius Clay at that time knocked out Sonny Liston, the then heavyweight champion, and the referee first time he said, the new heavyweight champion of the world is Cassius Clay. He stopped him. He said, no, not Kasi, Muhammad Ali. Again, second time, the referee said, the new heavyweight champion of the world, you know, Kasi. He said, no, Muhammad Ali. So in the boxing ring, Cassius Clay was announcing he's no longer Cassius Clay. He's no longer a Christian, but he's Muhammad Ali, a Muslim. You know, this is Islam. Islam. So those people who say Islam spread by the sword, a question. The greatest heavyweight champion of all time, Muhammad Ali used to be known as Cassius Clay. There was him in the boxing ring. There was Sonny Liston, the previous heavyweight champion of the world, knocked out on the ground in very short time in the ring, knocked out, and there was the referee. There was no Muslim soldier with a sword or a gun in the boxing ring. So it means that Muhammad Ali, nobody forced him to become, but he himself announced, you know, this is Islam. So if you have time, do, you can even take from the Islamic literature, even the English translation of the Quran, and uh, you know, read it for yourself. See for yourself, okay? And of course, uh, one last reminder: like uh, I mentioned, Allah says, "Wa bil isana," and do good to your parents. Look after, after your parents, okay? Thank, Thank you. you very much. Bye bye. Okay, so. Assalamu alaikum to all my fellow Muslim brothers and sisters. Uh, that was uh, 
two youngsters there. They were very well mannered and uh, they listened very carefully and they gave me their precious time. And of course now they have gone and um, uh, this is how it is. Islam did never spread by the sword or we cannot spread Islam by force. If this is the way Islam has spread. We speak to people, we talk to people, the people ask us, we reply to them, we speak to them and then it is up to them whether they want to or they don't want to be Muslim. Okay, thank you very much. Asalaamu